Predefined selections are often used when you have a list of specific items you'd like your customer to choose between, or if you're offering them a list of upgrade options. So when we need to create a predefined selections group in JobTread, you're going to start within the job budget, go ahead and add a cost group by clicking plus group, and then here you're going to choose the group name for that selections group. So we'll do basic appliance package selection. Great. We'll create the group header, and now we're going to add our options within that group that we'd like our customer to choose between. So I can add an item here, and then I can choose to do maybe the Maytag appliances from my catalog. So there's a cost item. I can drag it up into that cost group here, or I can just add them quickly by clicking these three dots and adding the cost item. Here I'm going to do maybe my Samsung appliances, and then I also have my Fisher and Paco appliances. All right, I may want to rearrange these so they're more in like good, better, best order. So let's pull my tag up to the top and then Samsung as a second option. And there's our cost and our price to the customer for those items. Of course, I want to make sure that my quantity, cost, and price is all completed here. So I'm gonna add one lump sum and then everything else looks pretty good. Now, when you have a cost group like this, currently you see that the cost and price at the group level is showing you a total of all of the items within that group. That means that this is a standard cost group. Now we need to convert it to a, a selections group. And the way that we'll do that is we're gonna click on these three dots here at the group level and click show details. When the detail drawer opens up for that group, then we have the option to allow selections. Let's toggle that on. And now you're gonna indicate how many selections are required. How many options does your customer need to choose? And in this case, they need to choose at least one appliance package. So we're gonna put one here. And then how many selections are allowed? Can they choose all three of them? Or do we want to limit them to only choosing maybe one of these appliances? So here we're just gonna say, choose one appliance package and then we'll leave that as is. So we're gonna close that, and then you'll notice that there's a little icon here that is indeed indicating that this is a selections group, and that means that there will be check, mark, check marks or check boxes next to each of these items for your customer to choose between them on a document. Now let's add another group as well, and this one we're gonna do more of an upgrades group, so we're gonna click plus cost group here, and then we're going to say appliance up upgrade options, great. And then I can add items in here. So let's go ahead and add our range hood. Perfect, and then let's also add a wine fridge, there it is. And then we'll go ahead and add a beverage cooler, and then maybe a trash compactor too. Great. So all of these items are in this cost group, but again, remember this cost group is just a standard cost group because it's totaling all the items within it. Therefore, we need to convert it to a selections group. So I'm gonna click these three dots, click on show details, and now I can allow selections. Now in this case, we're just offering these as options for our customer to upgrade themselves. And so we're not gonna require any options for them to select and also, they can select as many as we want, you know? And so um, in this case, have at it, select all four if you'd like. So I'm gonna leave that as zero at the minimum and the maximum as all. And then we'll go ahead and close this. Now we do have two different selections groups. This one is basically forcing them to choose an item and this one is giving them upgrade options that they can choose between. All right. So then when we add this to a document, we'll go ahead and create a proposal out of these. So I'll click plus document here, and then I'll choose my proposal. And as you can see, we're gonna carry both of these groups over onto our proposal. So we'll click create. And now you'll notice that you have the selection group. These are where we're requiring our customers to choose one option. And then we have the upgrades group where they can select as many as they would like. Now, as the customer selects these, you'll see that the range here does turn into a hard number. And then here it says $0, but as they add 
you'll notice that that amount increases. Now there is one other setting that you can consider for this if you'd like to show the difference in the cost as opposed to the hard cost for each of these items, then you can actually choose to edit that in the group settings. So we'll open up this cost group again. Now you can do this at the budget level or on this specific document. Open up the cost group details right here. And then you have this option to show selection amount differences. If I toggle that on, now you'll notice that the option that is pre-selected does not show a price. However, it does show the difference, so the added amount for the upgrades. And this way you can kind of display the delta to your customers as opposed to just the hard prices for each item. Now if we switch between these, you'll notice that that delta does show um, on all of the items that are not selected. Some contractors tend to use this if they have um, a base item that's automatically included in the budget and then they want to offer some upgrade options to their client, uh, but you do have that option. Now once you send this to the client, they then can go in and have the interactive experience of selecting their um, options and then anything that they select will appear in the budget and the budgeted cost will show up on the budgeted cost column for the item that they selected. And you can choose whether or not you want to leave the other items in your budget. Maybe they'll change their mind later on, so you might want to leave those. Otherwise, um, you can go ahead and delete the items that were not selected. If you have any questions, please contact your customer success manager and they will be happy to help.